Hi everybody. Today we're going to show you um, our RV. So before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. So we decided to do a video um, what our RV is like and um, how it works for us. Now uh, it's about 200 square feet um, is what we have to live in. Um, so we're going to do like a quick tour of our RV, um, the features that we have on it, the upgrade that we made when we bought it, and pretty much just how it works for us. This is just a cover. Um, it just helps to protect from the extra um, sun, the heat that comes into the RV. We also have another set of shade that's inside. But this is kind of like a first layer to stop the sunlight that's coming in and also to keep the cool air when the AC is blowing like it is now, especially down here in Florida. Uh, we have a nice little window here where we can see out. I don't know if you're familiar with the awnings on um, RV. A lot of them, they actually have an arm that comes down. Um, with this one, it's armless. Um, it also has um, wind detection. It's kind of hard to see, but the awning itself, it has LED light, which is kind of cool at night because it, it lights up the, whole, the entire area. We went with the dual pane windows because with these, you can actually open it completely um, to get a lot more wind going through. Well, we didn't want the type windows where you have to slide it left and right because you don't have access to the full extended window. It's pretty cool, especially when you're at the beach or something. You can open the window and just see the, the ocean in there. Um, this is one of our storage bays. It's not a lot of space. We usually keep our um, our table. We'll keep our grill and whatever else we need easy access to once we get to a campsite. This is another area. We went with the uh, 3200 Onan diesel generator. Um, and the reason for that is um, you're able to run the generator off the, um, the vehicle fuel vice needing propane. This area is the Truma Aqua Boat. And in here, that's what heats up our water to make sure we have on demand hot water inside. That's a big deal because instead of us having to run the uh, fresh water for however long in order to get the hot water going, we have instant hot water as soon as you turn on the faucet. So this area is our outside storage area. Uh, our outside storage is just that. It's like your garage, it's your junk area. We got a lot of junk in here. Um, as much junk as we can have in a 200 square foot house anyway. In here, we keep our hoses, gloves, stuff like that. Stuff that we would need whenever we go to dump our tank. Go back. This is actually where we keep our sewer hose. Um, and obviously that's what you need in order to dump your black and gray tank. If you notice that little black pole extended at the top, that's where we have our uh, we boost. So we like to boondock or to um, dry camp, you know, being a national forest. And a lot of times when you go to those places, there's no signal or reception. So the we boost kind of helps, assuming there is some type of reception to amplify that signal into the RV. And I'll show you once we get inside our setup and how we use the uh, a cell phone inside to include a mobile router in order to get Wi-Fi. So now we're on the driver's side of the RV. Um, so the most furthest bay at the back, inside here is where you pull the levers to dump your gray tank, your black tank. Um, you also have access to your outside bows in case you need it or they call it a shower maybe for TJ. And back here is where all your electrical stuff are stored. So inside here, you'll see that we have a automatic uh, surge guard. And then we also, if you look all the way on the back, there's a EMS progressive back there. And we use that to ensure that whenever we're hooking up, that the power that we're getting is good before it goes inside the RV. So, Obviously right now we're hooked up and you can tell because we have the, um, the sewer hose hooked up and we also have our fresh water hose hooked up. But if we're somewhere where we're glamping or 
you know, we're parked outside of somebody's house uh, or we're at a dump site and primarily it's because we're on the road and we need to fill up our tank. This is actually where we would fill it up. This is a gravity fed port. You just stick the hose in and you fill it up. This would be your overflow valve. Obviously, this is another um, dual pane window that it slides out just like the other side. Once we get inside, we'll show you what that's like. So here we have another bay. Um, it's the same size as the bay that's on the opposite side of the rig. Um, it's not a lot of space in them, but it's just enough space to, uh, to store the rest of my tools that I need in case something happens when I'm on the road. And the last bay that we have is where you actually have your propane. Now you don't store anything in here. Uh, it's just where, the, well, the propane is stored here, but we can't put anything else in here. Um, this setup right here is for the hydraulic leveling jack. So if you look on the bottom, on the deck, that's actually, there's four of them, and that's actually what we use to level the RV when we get to a site. Um, most people, if they don't have automatic leveling jacks, then they're using the type of blocks or something else to get the vehicle to level, and that makes a big difference, um, especially, especially when it comes time for your slide. If you're at an angle, you could potentially mess up the gears or the tracks that the slide goes in and out of, and that can affect um, your slide going in, and then you need some technician to come help you get it in. While we're out here, we might as well take some time to point out the map and all the states. Obviously, we started in California and we were out west anyway, so we did a lot of the, the Arizona, Utah, Nevada, Colorado. We did a lot of those states before we went on the road, and we've been making our way around to Florida, and we'll continue to try to hit all the states. Clearly, we missed the northeast portion. Our hope is to hit that up next year. So, important thing for us as we're going is we have a what's called a tire pressure monitor, um, and that is used to ensure that in case we're going down the road and we have a blowout, especially on the rear wheels, the intermediate or the outside, you want to know if you get a blowout. And it's going to be hard, especially since you have two tires on the rear end on both sides, you might not notice it and that could potentially cause damage. So what the, the tire pressure monitor uh, does, it, it gives us an alarm inside the RV and that'll tell us that we have a blowout or we have um, at least a ruptured tire. So there are two different sets of batteries that are on our RV. We have the house battery, uh, for which we have 250 amp hours of battery. Um, and that's for the portion of the RV that we live in. And then you have the chassis um, battery that's separate, that just run, you know, starts the vehicle and stuff like that. Um, and we went with the upgrade for the lithium battery solely because we knew that we would be boondocking primarily. And for boondocking, we don't have uh, electric hookups or anything. And because of that, we wanted uh, more battery uh, power and battery that lasts longer um, using the solar that we have to charge it. And we also have the generator as we showed you earlier. Come on in. Hey guys, welcome to our RV. So today we're going to go over the inside, um, how we have it organized and how we live in this small RV. So up here we have our dishes. We have these nice little organizers. So when we're driving, um, when we stop, it doesn't all fall out all over the place. Um, we have our Berkey. Um, this has been amazing on our um, travels. So we can just use the faucet water here that's already filtered anyway. Um, but then we just fill this up so we always have drinking water wherever we are. Um, we keep our trash under the sink along with our appliances, rice cooker, crock pot. We use those quite often, especially on travel days. They come in handy. Um, one of the main reasons we chose this RV is the counter space. Most RVs that you see, especially this size, you get nowhere near this amount of counter space. We also have, we don't use them, but we have um, cutting boards that go over here so you have more counter space or a cutting board. Um, but we don't really need that too much. So we have the induction stovetop. 
and we also have a propane. So when we're boondocking, we strictly use the propane. Um, that seems to have lasted us a long time. Um, this we only use when we're hooking up because it does pull a lot um, of electric. And like Tamar mentioned earlier, we do <clears throat> have lithium batteries and we have 510, I believe, watts of solar panel. So that works great for a lot of stuff, but we just, it just drains the battery. So we, we don't use that when we're boondocking. More storage over here. And that's usually that's just our coffee stuff mainly. Our generator and all that, but tomorrow we'll go over that with you. Here's our TV that we have. We don't use it too often when we're boondocking as well. Um, we're usually just on our tablets or our phones. So all of our electronics are behind there and tomorrow we'll go over that as well. So we have our convection oven slash microwave. This thing is nice. So basically anything you do in an oven, you can do in here. Um, so we don't have any, like, can't do this or that because we're in the RV. So that's nice. Now we have our nice large drawers. That the, they have the soft clothes. So those are nice and deep and pretty far back. So we have lots of space in there for storage. Then our fridge and freezer, not a complete full size as a house, as a residential, but it holds a lot. So we have no complaints there and we, grocery days, we have to, tomorrow is like a little, was it Tetris? Tomorrow's the one for that. Sometimes I buy too much for the freezer and then we're, we're scrambling. So here's our pantry. We have three pull out drawers, which are nice. And down here, we just have a shelf. So we have a little basket of snacks for TJ. So it's just easy for him to grab or do on his own. Here's our double pane windows that Tamara was talking about earlier. So we have this nice shade here. So when we have the windows open, a screen to keep the bugs out. Or if we want it dark in here or just for privacy, then you just put them up. And it gets pretty dark in here with these up. And our storage space, we have to be, everything is used very well here. So this is pretty much all I own except for a little bit in the closet. So all my clothes, belongings are in here. We use those um, closet organizers, the ones that, that hang in here. So we just put it out this way. So I have all of our stuff organized um, and it's lightweight because weight is a big concern with us with our RV. This one is just kind of our extra everything that we might need for the RV or for us. So that goes in there and everything TJ owns. So we get a lot of uh, questions. What do you do with all his toys? He doesn't have any toys. He has a Ziploc bag of Legos. That's about it. So all those clothes that I excess buy and clearance, but I got to try to stop buying stuff and just slowly get rid of it so he doesn't have so much. Um, but that's everything he owns is right there. And here is our dining room table that we never get out. So this is really nice. You can do it this way or this way. And then you can remove this and slide under here. And then we have a cushion. So it makes a nice bed usually for travel days for TJ. Um, he's buckled in and he just spread out. So that's nice for him. And then we have these on both sides, leg rest. So if you're laying on with your back there, you can watch the TV, which is pretty nice. And our second biggest reason why we got this RV besides the countertops is our Murphy bed. So we wanted to maximize our space that we were, we had in here. So in order to do that, we wanted the Murphy bed so that when we're not sleeping and it's not nighttime, we still have the living space. So this is our Queen Murphy bed. We have a, we put a three inch pillow topper on here, which it's really comfortable. So people, when I think people feel bad for us, like, oh, you can come stay in our, our place. We have a bed for you. We're okay. So I had to have a Betty. I did a lot of research and everybody said Betty is the way to go. It does save us a little bit of time, but I just like that you can zip it up and you're done and you're more tucked in. So the Betty comes with sheets and everything. You just zip yourself in. 
Everything's included. That's my little, my upgrade I chose. And then I'll show you, we have more storage space here. So we just have a couple baskets in there. That's stuff that we don't usually get into every day or it's some more, um, just more space for our clothes or whatnot. And then I have a nice window on my side, which is nice during when we're boondocking. We have our windows open and I have that open so we get a cross breeze. And we have these nice little night lights. You can do this nice blue one or you also have the bright one for reading. And that is it for the bed. Then to put the bed up, super easy. Push a button and back up it goes. Now we just put these back. Last but not least, we have our bathroom. The block mirrors on or the square mirror tiles. And this is our little baby closet that Tamar and I share. We have that. We have our medicine cabinet. We have nice little clear, it's messy in there, um, containers just so when we're driving and we stop, it doesn't just pour out everywhere because it's done that when we first started. And more storage space down there. We have our shower. All right, and this is our the front of the RV. We have our, since we're not moving right now for a while, we you just turn the seats around. We have these nice cushions. So it's really actually pretty comfortable. This is actually Tamar's seat when we're parked. Um, he just pulls up his little leg rest and he's good. Um, here's our cushion for the, the bed that we make for TJ. So that just sits up here too. Um, that's it. And then TJ's bed is up here. He has his own little privacy curtains. Um, his school book right now, but that's his little space. It's actually a pretty good size. We do, we did stick a large pillow there just to make sure he doesn't roll out. He's kind of all over the place still. So that's his little, his little area. Since we don't have a lot of space, uh, and we need to have Wi-Fi and all those things when we get to places. We actually decided to do a setup where we use a, um, a different a mobile router. Uh, we have a cell phone that's in the back that we use a hotspot off. It gives us the uh, Wi-Fi signal so TJ can hook up to his uh, tablet so that we can do our schoolwork and all that stuff. And this is where we keep the rest of the uh, electronics. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Cheers! Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below.